Hello, I'm User Friendly's Assistant, and this is Lifeform. It's a visualizer, Max for Live device. It's available for download on my Patreon. We bystanders observe. This video is just going to be sort of a quick tutorial of how it works. So when you drop it into your session, you can see this little window pops up. If I now click on Ableton, it's going to disappear. That's because floating is off. I'm going to turn floating on, and now I can hit anywhere inside of Ableton, and the window is not going to disappear. We don't see any visualizers in there. Any visualizers. We don't see anything, period. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm going to hit this button and now it's turned on. So now we can see these shapes in here. So to change these shapes, that's gonna be these three sections here. We can sort of change the scale, change the rotation, things like that. We can also change the zoom, that's gonna bring it forward and backward. And then there's these point things here. So we can turn those on. You can see there's these tiny little particles in there change the size of those. And you can see they're sort of tied to the shape. The reason this zoom option is here is because depending on the type of sort of mesh that you're using, it may end up blocking certain points. So just to make it a little clearer, change the size of these a little bit. And you can see it's kind of mostly this last shape here is sort of blocking out the shape behind it. So depending on the type of mesh you're using, you may want to move it further back. The points are going to demand a little bit more of your GPU or CPU. I can't remember which one. Um, I think they're going to be mostly GPU. But either way, if your computer is kind of struggling a little bit, you may want to try turning those off. <clears throat> Another way to save a lot is going to be to keep this section here on the lower numbers. You might think that like, oh, six dimensions is not going to look good because that's a low number and high numbers always look better. That's not really the case. You're just going to sort of get a different style rather than like something that looks worse. So I'm going to turn these back on for now. Now, another note is, for example, the line width here. That's not going to do anything on polygon because that's not made up of lines. If we go to something like line strip, now you can see that that's sort of having an effect. So that's going to be to change these sort of different shapes inside here. Here is where we're going to sort of get to the real extreme stuff that's going to change the shape a lot. These are different noises inside here. So there's going to be different flavors. Checker is going to also be kind of this straight line thing. And then distorted is going to be a little bit more flowing. These are tied together in a way. So it's kind of like this first one is going to run through this one as well. So depending on these, the combination of these two is going to determine sort of how these affect the overall shape. The mutate is going to change the offset and origin of the BFGs. So kind of clicking these, you're going to get a sort of a random shape. The scale is going to change the scale of the noise. So it's going to change the size as well. And you may get a smaller size. So if you do something like gradient, it's going to stay a bit smaller versus something like simplex. So just different combinations of things. And then there's this move here, which that's basically going to move the offset and origin slowly, kind of slowly and fast of this second noise source here. So it's not supposed to be something, this isn't synced to the clock or anything like that. That's just to sort of add some organic movement. So suppose you added your kick drum here to this line, that's what would sort of tie it. 
to the music and then the speed would just be something kind of to add a little bit more interest. So if you were struggling again with your sort of, uh, computer, you know, sort of being able to process all this, you may consider leaving that off. So the last thing here is the sort of light section. This is where you're going to change the color. So this, these three dials here, they're not actually changing the color of the shape. They're changing the color of the light. So you can see that the spheres, for example, most of them are staying a little bit more on the brighter white side. And then here we have these sort of softer uh, matte colors. If we increase the bloom, well, nothing happens because the bloom is off. So if we turn the bloom on, then we get that sort of like neon light sort of thing. Here, this is going to be the background color. So you can see it just kind of went completely white. It's because of the amount of bloom that we have. So if I turn that way down, you can see now we have that nice sort of faded image. The gray, it's not much different than the white. The main reason that's there is actually if we have the bloom off. Black, things are going to disappear. White is super bright. Gray is kind of going to be a middle ground. So now it, I feel like it kind of has a little bit more focus on the actual shapes here inside. Change the dimensions. So again, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that looks better. It's just sort of a different and a more complex shape. So don't feel like you have to use these higher numbers. You're just going to get something different. And this, you know, you can kind of change this quite a bit depending on sort of what you're doing with these other controls here. And then again, the noise here. So you can still get quite a bit. As far as sort of manipulating these controls with sounds, the worst way you can do it is with just one track. So if this is your next, you know, banger, and you were to kind of map this to whatever, It's kind of going to be your bog standard visualizer that just sort of subtly changes mainly with the kick drum. You can help that out a little bit if you kind of go through and do a little bit of automation and things like that. And by that, I mean like actually drawing in automation, but it's still going to be kind of you know, it's pretty basic as far as what you can do with that. If you wanted to sort of carve out just the low end, you can group this. And then I'm just going to add uh, an EQ3 and then just turn the mid and high down. Now we just kind of have the low end. So now all of those controls are just going to be triggered mostly by like the kick and the bass and things like that. We can still hear it, uh, but it's kind of just the low end. I'm going to put a utility in there and just turn it down. Now we can duplicate this and maybe turn the low down and the mid up and map that to something like maybe the points here. And then duplicate it one more time, turn the mid down the high up and now we kind of have the low end high end and middle to sort of affect different things depending on what's going on it's going to be kind of uh to taste how you want to have these controls for example at the high end i would say it should be kind of pretty fast and then the low end maybe a little bit slower on the rise and fall of these envelopes and then to kind of get sound back in again you can just duplicate these and delete these effects or you know just add another chain here But ideally, I would say better than that would be to have actual broken out tracks. So kind of like stemmed out or, you know, each individual track and put an envelope follower in each one of those. Or you can kind of 
build a, you know, a whole kit around this visualizer. So if we do um, a MIDI track, and I'm just going to move this over to the MIDI track and delete that. This is a audio effect. So you can put it on a MIDI track or an audio track or whatever, and then put your instrument before it. So if we kind of come in here, now we can go in and put envelope followers on each one of these tracks and map them to the own, you know, kind of their own thing, or even add things like expression control. So we'll add that just on the kick here. And now every time the kick happens, we can get a random value. So this isn't actually tied to the sound of the kick, it's using the MIDI trigger. And you can see already that's kind of just a little bit more interesting. And then suppose we did on the hi-hat, an envelope follower. And depending on, you know, how you're processing it, like for example, if you have a, a compressor absolutely crushing this hi-hat, you may want to put the envelope before that. Or for example, if you have a reverb, depending on how you want it to respond is going to determine where you want this envelope follower to be. So I'm going to put this on line width and maybe also point size here. Which I had was it this one. Now, the last thing would be, suppose you were to do something like a snare, uh, rather than doing an envelope follower, you could use an actual MIDI envelope. So that way you can sort of shape how this responds. So I'm going to put it on, uh, I guess, I'm trying to think, actually it's Bloom, that'll be pretty apparent. So now I'll add some snares. Now we can sort of change how that how that reacts. And since we have the sustain up high, we could even kind of increase that so that way it stays high. Now what's really fun is kind of like as you're adding all this stuff to then kind of go through and maybe change a few of the controls, maybe change some of these, change the color, change the size. Mutate. That one one last trick here and then that's going to be it but you can see that that sort of bloom like you you would always it looks really good but you don't always want that happening every time it kind of gets sort of jarring you could group that and we'll duplicate this again so that way the note is always going to pass not that one delete this one the note is always going to pass through but then on this one you could do perhaps like a, a velocity. So now you have a little bit more variation. That's why it's going to be better to sort of, if you can, Add this to the actual track itself, the visualizer. I mean, that way you can go through and 
you know, add envelopes, add expression controls, add envelope followers. It seems to me usually things, real extreme things like the scale, for example, that's going to do much better with something like a MIDI envelope. And then these more subtle things here, they'll work really well for actual envelope followers because they can sort of shutter and it's still, it's not going to be overbearing. Whereas if this shutters, it's going to be kind of overwhelming with how it looks. So, yeah. Anyway, this is, uh, it's available on my Patreon and, uh, there's some example sessions and things like that in there. So you can sort of take a closer look at how I have all of this, uh, set up. And in, even if you want to, you can open up the patch and take a look inside and see what's going on there. If you're interested in actually doing this patching, so making this stuff, I would recommend checking out Amazing Mac stuff, Ned Brush, Hearing Glass, and Andrew Robinson. They all have great jitter tutorials to sort of, uh, you know, kind of start learning some of the jitter stuff, but a bit beyond me to be explaining quite yet. So anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoy and have fun. Bye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>